G'day curd nerds. G'day curd nerds. Well g'day curd nerds. Well g'day curd nerds. Well g'day curd nerds. Well g'day curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Welcome to another live stream. This is Ask the Cheese Man, where you can learn about or ask questions about uh, cheese making at home. Okay, um, fantastic to see you all back here again. Really appreciate you turning up uh, to the live stream. Um, got a few housekeepings or, or shout outs to start with. Uh, got a new YouTube member to the ever growing list of YouTube members. Um, and that is uh, Karen Cortner. Thank you, Karen, for your patronage uh, via YouTube memberships. And also on Patreon, we have a new member there, uh, John Kramer. Thank you, John, uh, for your patronage over on Patreon. Uh, if you want to join them, uh, there's a join button below for YouTube memberships and a link down below in the description for Patreon. Okay, um, few housekeepings and I see there's lots of people in the chat it's very lively thank you very much uh, I over Easter I spent some time making two new cheeses well cheeses that I'd never made before uh, the first one is uh, Lancashire uh, so it's supposed to be a, a cheddar style cheese that's a little bit moister and it only ages for uh, four to eight months. So I'm going to go on the four months uh, uh, just to see what that tastes like. So um, that video is in post-production at the moment. Also a, a Swiss cheese uh, in the Alpine style called uh, Schabrinz. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's spelled S-B-R-I-N-Z. So Schabrinz. Um, that is a very firm cheese. Um, and over the weekend, I kind of went back to my roots. I used pasteurized and homogenized milk just to see if I could finesse a curd out of it and, uh, see what I could, uh, make and see if it worked. Um, uh, and I'll tell you what, those curds are not firm. Um, so you'll see during the video, there's some, uh, there's some, well, some rescue curd rescue happening it's like uh, rescue rangers but even better um okay and there's going to be a few taste tests coming up very soon as well i've got lots of cheese in the cheese cave and we'll be tasting uh things like the jalapeno um uh, jalapeno cheddar um we've also got uh the blue cheese we've also got Oh, I can't even remember. So many cheeses. But I know there will be lots of them. Um, I'm just putting a hold on the Keep Calm and Eat Cheese series for a little while. I want to get a few uh, cheese-making videos under my belt um, so I can release those uh, on a weekly basis and get those out to you guys, seeing that's the, the cheeses that everybody seems to, to love. Um, also, I've got to make some sodium citrate uh, which is a combination of uh, sodium bicarbonate and citric acid. Uh, there's a way to make it. And sodium citrate is an emulsifier. And it's one of the key ingredients in cheeses like American cheese, Kraft Singles, uh, I think it's Velveta Velveteer, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, all those processed American cheeses, um, I will be making some sodium citrate so I can make some American cheese in a collaboration with Larry, who I think is in the chat at the moment and watching uh, Larry from Deep South Texas is his channel. Uh, so I'll be making some of that uh, very soon. Uh, i got to get that going. Okay. Um, and don't forget, of course, Super Chat. Um, you'll see down on your little chat box. There's no chat today because uh, last week, uh, we had some issues with some very naughty people putting stuff up. Even though Kim could actually ban them in the chat itself, uh, we couldn't get it off of the screen because I use a different system uh, to show the chat on the screen um, that's normally over there in front of the curd nerd picture. 
uh, and we couldn't get them off. So it uh, it wasn't good. It wasn't family friendly. So anyway, um, anyway, we'll say some good days and we'll get stuck into it, shall we? So the first person was um, Sir Benjamin, and the, the well, the first person. The first person is Ruth. <laughs> Hello, Ruth. Um, first super chat, anyway. And you should get a little, um, I don't know where you, oh, there's your gold star. There we go. Lovely. And Ruth has a question. She beats all the other questions. Uh, Gavin, would you make a PH video? The Giannicus Caldwell book has a good chapter on it, but I'd like to see. Uh, thanks. That is a good suggestion about PH. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, uh, it is essential to measure the pH of the different stages of the cheese if you want to make a cheese over and over and over again to the same consistency, which I rarely do because I make so many different cheeses every single time. But uh, good point, and thank you very much for the super chat, Ruth. Uh, we'll go back to... Um, g'day. So, Priz, Ruth, of course... Uh, Zepus, I think that's how you say it. Rocky, g'day Rocky. Kim, thank you Kim for turning up, of course. Jordan, g'day Jordan. Jordan's a member and so is Ruth uh, on YouTube memberships. Uh, Larry, Deep South Texas, Be Avenged, Goat Garden Farm, um, Milos, Paul, Patricia, uh, another Patricia who's a member. G'day Patricia. Um, uh, Miss Arrows, Michael, Randy, Lewis, Andrew, uh, Aga, nice to see you, mate, all the way from Spain. Uh, Artie Frog and Thin Steve. Oh, any more? Jim, Craig, g'day, Craig. Um, XPFC Wintergreen, g'day. Um, Jeff Hamby, another member. Thank you, Jeff. Mark, uh, Lewis, that guy, uh, Randy. And anyway, that's as far as I'll go. So let's go to the question, shall we? Let's have a look. Um, first question is from Rocky, who I missed. Uh, Rocky said, made baby blues at day 27 uh, and very soft now. Cannot scrape off blue mould. Any harm wrapping, not scraping and putting in the regular fridge? Uh, no, there won't be any issue with that at all, Rocky. Um, uh, wrap it, make sure it's all... Um, uh, safe from other molds and that, and then it'll just uh, ripen. Now, if they're very soft, uh, you'll find th that uh, they probably won't last too much longer in the fridge. Anyway, we've got another super chat there. This one's from Ruth again. <laughs> Thank you, Ruth. And there's your gold star, of course. Um, said the provolone video was so helpful. I have had many failures at my pasta fallout. I have had so many failures at my pasta fallout, pasta falada. Uh, thanks for showing your struggle and troubleshooting. Uh, you're welcome, Ruth. I was really going to hold off on that uh, provolone video. It actually took me a long time to make it because I'd had it sitting there for four months or something before I actually produced that video because I really didn't think that really real long form video would would anybody would watch it and they do which was absolutely fantastic okay um anyway back to the other comments uh where are we next one is uh mylos says hi gavin my friend got a smoker and i love to do smoke cheddar um uh is it best to smoke once I press the cheese or after it's matured for a few weeks? Um, my loss, it's best to smoke your cheese after it's fully matured. Uh, that is the best way that you won't interrupt any of the enzymes um, from doing their thing. Uh, so, yeah, do it after is the best way. Paul said, hi, Gavin, I doubled your Cotswold recipe to 20 litres, do I still age it from one to three months? I'm guessing with minimum ageing, I'm guessing the minimum ageing time would increase. I'm using a larger mould for a much bigger wheel. Uh, Paul, yes, I would tack uh, a few more months on 
top of that, probably age it out to six months even, uh, because it does need more time ripening. You'll find the centre will be a lot moister with a larger cheese with more uh, moisture and whey trapped inside that doesn't have enough uh, as much chance as evaporating. So, uh, yeah, best to increase the ageing time. All the temperatures and all that sort of stuff and the humidity should all be the same. Okay, Patrick. Uh, Patrick says, I want to get into cheese making. What is a... Nice, hard cheese to begin with. Um, probably one of the simplest hard cheeses to make uh, and quickest satisfaction, Patrick, would be Kefili. So go and check out the Kefili video. Uh, if Kim has uh, there somewhere, which she is, I know. Uh, if she can put the link up to that, that would be fantastic for Kefili, which is a great little Welsh cheese. Um that uh, does taste absolutely amazing, and it's nice and quick. Um, Zipa says, hi, Gavin. I hope you're having an awesome day. Well, I just woke up, so yes, it's awesome so far. Um, this isn't a question, but I love your videos. Oh, my gosh. Thank you very much. Um, Michael says, hi, Gavin, from Montreal, Canada. Made my first cheese ever last week following your feta video. Tastes amazing. Thank you. You're most welcome, Michael. Um, Andrew says, uh, greetings from the lizard or lizard in Cornwall, most southerly mainland village in the UK. Nice to know. I think I've been there actually. Um, Kim and I went over, well, Kim lived there. I went over to visit her when we were courting and we went to Cornwall. Uh, we stayed at a lovely little cottage near Tintagel, um, and had one of the best Cornish pasties I've ever had in my life. Amazing. Anyway, moving right along, um, Milos said, uh, and one more question, I'm going to make Parmesan cheese from 70 litres of milk. Uh, anything I should keep in mind or just simply multiply your recipe? Um, yeah, look, just yeah, multiply it where it needs to be. The temperatures and times um, should all be the same, uh, the timings uh, and the ageing temperature uh will be the same you'll need to dry it out uh so air dry it first before you put it into the cheese cave um and uh everything should be okay so we've got another super chat there let's see if i can get to who that is um uh, michelle i think that is g'day michelle lovely to see you thank you for your super chat let me just get the curd nerd sign off um and you should get a gold star in a minute um, you've said, started making cheese a few weeks ago and I've been watching all your videos non-stop. Keep up the great vids, thank you. I will. You keep watching, I'll keep making them. Um, so, absolutely fantastic. Thank you for that uh, Canadian $5, which I think is the same as Australian $5. Absolutely fabulous. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, back to the other questions. Um, so, yes, yeah, so your 70 litre milk um, uh, parmesan, it you need to make sure it dries out, uh, which is good. Um, and a lot of parmesans are matured on pine boards. So if you're going to make one that big, it may be very difficult to put it in your cheese cave unless you've got a really big fridge. So anyway, hope that works out for you. Let us know in the in future episodes of Ask the Cheese Man. That would be great. Um, Aga says, uh, it's like Groundhog Day. Yep, every Wednesday morning it's Groundhog Day, but it's so cool. Uh, Sir Benjamin says, this is my first stream. I'm so excited. Every stream's a good stream, uh, Sir Benjamin. Very cool. Artie Frog says, in the States, it's very hard to find full cream milk. Uh, what would you use as a replacement? Uh, okay, so full cream milk here in Australia is the same as whole milk in the US. So uh, be there, no confusion. That's just what it's called here. Um, so as long as it's between 3.3 or whatever your standardised milk is over there and 3.8, it'll work fine for cheese making. Um, in the recipes that I say add cream, make sure you do. And make sure it's not ultra pasteurized cream because it just won't help the, the curd set at all. So try that. 
Okay. Um, may the Kurds fall firmly for all. Thanks, Aga. Yeah, cool. Um, where are we? Oh, I'm up to where I started, <laughs> where the stream started. Uh, yeah, we're both well. That's cool. Uh, Miss Arrow says, how can I make double cream cheese? Um, okay. Yeah. You, what you can do is when you make, say, the cream cheese video that I've, the version of cream cheese that I make, which is simply with milk, you can add an extra 150 milliliters of, um, not double cream, um, what's it called? Just pouring cream. As long as it's got no thickeners or anything like that, um, that's the best. And uh, then make the cream cheese from there. Okay. Um, Andrew says, I guess, I guess to making a video of its manufacture, Jutland Blue. Hmm? You want a video of Jutland Blue? Let's, I don't know if I've got a recipe, but I'll see if I can scour the interwebs and find one. Um, okay, Zepus is creeping me out there. Cheese man, I love you so much. Right, there you go. There's a wink and a nod. Mark says, I made your triple pepper jack, Gav. Did you get any mould on yours? Mine wasn't vacuum packed, just in a red box, same as yours. Um, no, I don't believe there was any mould. I think all the chilli pepper killed it all. Um, I don't remember there being any mould, so no, there wasn't. But it was a fairly dry cheese, so maybe I should have vacuum packed it um, maybe after a month, but... Uh, yeah, it was it was very nice. Too hot. It was way too hot. What am I saying? Of course, it was it was just way too hot. Stupid hot. Okay. Um, Lewis says, um, uh, Gavin, you should try making. Ooh. Uh, Raker. No, I can't even pronounce it. Sorry, mate. Don't want to bastardize it. Um, it's a Brazilian cream cheese ish kind of cheese. I'll write it down. It's going on the list, but it doesn't mean it's getting made. <laughs> As some people pointed out the other day, actually. I can't remember who was being cheeky. Um, but it's just an ideas list, basically, for the next video. Uh, that guy says, love your content. Looking forward to making my first cheese soon. What would you recommend as a good starter cheese? Um, as far as starter cheeses go, um, give uh, paneer a go first. Uh, then uh, try uh, whole milk ricotta, then halloumi, feta, uh, all the Mediterranean-style cheeses, the soft cheeses are the best to start with, and then maybe get into, say, kefili, and then from there, the world's your oyster, just go for it. But, yeah, get a few of the simple soft cheeses under your belt first before you get stuck into hard cheeses because um, you really need need to know how the milk behaves and all that sort of stuff for those cheeses first before you can get stuck into um, other cheeses. Okay, where are we up to? Um, Randy says, um, greetings from South Dakota on a beautiful Tuesday afternoon. Well, it's a Wednesday morning here. It's like a time warp. Um, if you ever had to replace your cheese pot, uh, would you stay to your proven method or switch to an insert-style double boiler. Um, you know, Randy, I was looking the other day at sous vide, the, the wand that you put into water and it heats up the water and that sort of stuff. You may have seen some of them. I think a Nova do one. There are lots of um, clones out there these days, and you can adjust the temperature really easily using some switches on there. You can even connect to you know, an app on your phone. So um, they're pretty cool. I think if I was starting again now, I probably would just invest in a very big um, bain-marie and put my pot in that, put some water in it, elevate the pot off the bottom and use a, um, a sous vide to control the water. Uh, probably wouldn't do what I'm doing now. But the thing is, you've got to find something big enough, a vessel big enough to put the biggest pot you've got into it, and my pot's really big, and it just fits in the sink when I need to wash it. Uh, and mine's only a 14-litre? 14, 14, yeah, 14-litre pot. Um, and try to find something to shove that in, that's for sure. But 
yeah, if if I was starting again, probably my recommendation, get a sous vide. You can control the temperature so easily, so easily, and rarely can you go over temperature, which a lot of people have trouble with when they're first starting to make um, cheese. Okay, um, Craig says, can you shed some light on the debate on cheese that pregnant women can eat or not eat? I believe cheese made from pasteurised milk is safe. Um, not being a doctor or a medical professional, Craig, I can just give some uh, evidence that I've read. So pasteurised milk cheeses are the safest uh, and the ones without mould um, are probably even safer. So any um, non-rind cheddars, anything like that, um, anything that's been commercially made is the safest. They have to test everything, of course, um, is probably the best for pregnant women to eat. Um, but if they're not safe, if they're not sure, then don't eat it. That's as, as simple as it gets, I suppose. Um, but yeah, it's um, the main concern is um, tuberculosis. Um, from raw milk and that indeed back in the old days before pasteurization tb was a massive issue um, the ter tuberculosis bacteria um, used to get into milk no problems at all it, even if say the dairy hand had it it would travel into the milk no problems at all and breed and multiply and um, people would get very very sick with tb also known as consumption i think back in the old days Anyway, um, moving right along. Uh, like I said, I'm no medical expert. That's just um, what I've read. Uh, Manel says, hello, Mr. Gavin. Hello, Manel. Uh, Thin Steve. Uh, no, he's talking to somebody else. Not me. Um, and Rocky says it's Velveeta. Velveeta. Ah, not Velvety. Uh, all right, Velveeta. Right, sorry about that. Um, Miss Arrow says, can you translate your video to Arabic, please? Unfortunately, I can't speak Arabic or write Arabic, so I won't be able to translate them. And do you know that it actually costs about $400 to translate one of my 30-minute video, 30 videos? I actually looked into it once. Um, so I don't have $400 unless the Super Chats flow thick and fast. Um, so I won't be translating any videos into Arabic or any other language anytime soon. Best I can do is English subtitles and they're generated by YouTube and sometimes they're inappropriate for small children, probably because it can't understand my Australian accent. There are, I've, I've had so many comments uh, in some of the older videos that um, crack me up that uh, people say there are swear words in the auto stuff and I don't swear on this channel at all. Maybe... Um, uh, I don't know. I'm not even going to swear. I don't swear. Not not on the, not on the chat, any on the video, anyway. All right, cool. Um, back to the questions. Where are we? Uh, Mark says, it's only, it's only a few very small spots so far. It's about a month old so far. I'll sort it out with a brainwash. <laughs> a brainwash. A brine wash. When it gets a bit worse, I suppose. Yes, Mark, that's probably the best to do. Uh, then Steve says, um, hey, Gavin, I know you'll probably had this question before, but have you ever tried Kazu Mazu? No, I haven't, um, Thin Steve, because it's actually banned. Um, it's, yes, it is a cheese. You have to go to Sicily. Sicily? Yeah, Sicily to eat it. So I haven't travelled to Sicily, so I'm not going to eat it. And I probably wouldn't if I was there either. Paul says, with homogenized pasteurized milk, I have a heck of a time with the curd not fracturing. Uh, I usually save the milk, milk for pea-sized curds. Um, yes, 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 um, indeed. Because when I was making the chabrintz, uh on Saturday, um, I found that after I cut the curds and started stirring it, it fractured, but the good thing was it needed rice grain size curd pieces, so I was fine. There was no issues whatsoever. However, when I went to make the uh, Lancashire on 
Uh, when did I make that? Monday. Um, <clears throat> I had a heck of a time. In fact, I'm actually, it's, what, what's today? Wednesday. I'm actually still pressing that cheese now because I just can't get it to close the rind. So I pressed it overnight. It actually asked for a pressing of six hours. I've pressed it for nearly 18 now. Uh, not a lot of moisture is coming out, which is good because it's supposed to be a fairly moist cheese. Um, but we'll see how that goes. But yes, I totally agree. I'm going to go back to unpasteurized, uh, sorry, unhomogenized milk, pasteurized but unhomogenized milk. Uh, when I contact my regular supplier, which I should do today. Somebody remind me, uh, call Inglenook Dairy. Milk Dairy. And they deliver my lovely milk for cheese making, which is fantastic of them. And all for free, uh, just for a mention occasionally, um, which I do, and I do enjoy. Their, cheese, their milk is so good for making cheese. Um, if you've used it, I think Craig's used it before. Craig Castry, who's in the chat here somewhere. He lives in the same area I do. Okay, anyway, back to the the questions. And I haven't got past um, 8.37 on my timeline here. Uh, and I see that it's 8.56, so I'm way behind. If you've got any burning questions, don't forget to do a super chat. Um, and I'll get to that straight away, like I have with uh, uh, Ruth and Michelle's questions. Um, Nim says, uh, hey, Gavin, me and my long-distance partner love watching your videos together. Uh, really informative. Thanks, Nim. Appreciate it, mate. Um, Patricia says, cut my Jarlsberg after two months. It was delicious, but the eye development was really poor. Uh, it was my first propionic Shimani cheese. What's the best way to ensure bigger eyes? Uh, best way. A couple of ways. Uh, Patricia, a little bit more propionic Shimani, I know. You're only supposed to put a, oh, the tip of a knife, uh, of a sharp knife, is the amount you're supposed to put in. I actually, if you look at, I think my Yalesburg recipe calls for a quarter of a teaspoon, which is a massive amount. But I'll tell you what, the eyes are always massive too, which is really cool. Um, a warmer temperature is probably the best thing. During that, um, that um, eye development period, when it's in a warm area, um, I read the other day that Propionic Shimani, um, its optimum temperature is 22 degrees Celsius, um, for its CO2. And sometimes you're going to have a bit of a runaway effect if it's at that high temperature, but that's probably the best if just increase the temperature. I know I say about 16 degrees Celsius in my Yalesburg recipe, but try that out. Um, increase the temperature, you'll get more um, uh, you'll get more gas development um, within the cheese. Um, Ruth says, um, I was getting a little crazy with pasta filata. You stayed calm in that video. I'll keep trying, but no provolone yet. Oh, that's sad to hear, um, Ruth. The when, once you get the um, pasta filata recipe working. And I think I've got one that's kind of foolproof. If, uh, I don't know if you... I think you probably tried the Oaxaca one because it's in the course that you did. And Ruth's a, a member of the um, Curd Nerd Academy, by the way, uh, that you can find the course at uh, courses.littlegreenworkshops.com.au and you'll find the Curd Nerd Academy beginner's course. Um um, but yeah, the Oaxaca video in there is one of the best pasta filata recipes um, that I've come across and it works. Well, it works for me anyway, um, all the time. So I would just make provolone, mozzarella, Oaxaca, uh, scamorza, everything with that single recipe and, it, and just age it appropriate and it'll turn out fine. Okay, um, let me have a look where I'm up to. Um Kim says, I'm thinking about the Velveteen Rabbit, indeed. <laughs> uh, right, where, where did I get up to? Oh, here we are, Chris. Uh, Chris says, hi, Gavin. Have you heard of Brie Noir? It's a brie that has been aged for up to two years. My goodness. Um, do you think I could buy shop-bought brie and age it for a year or two myself? Not sure, sure how the cheese would react. Um Problem is, uh, Chris, is that uh, normal brie 
the one you get in France anyway is made with raw milk. Um, and I ha <clears throat> have a lot more funky cultures in it. Um, uh, lactic bacteria that would develop the flavour and that sort of thing. Uh, so, and it will go so runny. It will, Well, the ones I make anyway go runny as anything uh, if you age them past six weeks. So I don't know how the heck that would... Um, that would work unless it's been stabilised, unless it was made with uh, a thermophilic uh, starter culture instead of a mesophilic. That would stabilise the paste and you would then be able to make it much, be able to store it much longer. So, Which I intend to do soon is make um, camembert and brie with uh, thermophilic culture. And we'll see what happens there. Uh, Mark says, uh, watched a good video, long all the nor ones. Hmm? Right on. Uh, Beck is awesome. G'day, Beck. Um, hi, Gavin. I was wondering, how did you figure out the recipe for the Borson cheese? Well, that's a secret. Um, I don't know. Just went along. I actually found a recipe, found two recipes on... Uh, YouTube, which, you know those recipes that they do and they don't tell you what the ingredients are and they just show you what they do? Well, from there, I kind of made it up as I went along and I'm glad I did because it turned out to be one crack and cheese. It really was nice. Um, and like I said in the video, there was a couple of things I probably would have done a little bit different. Um, but... Uh, I think it turned out fairly well for a first go. Goodness me. Yeah. There you go. So I cobbled it together a couple of videos. I think I had a recipe somewhere for a style of a cheese that was very similar. Threw it all together, see what the uh, see what the winds would do with it, and uh, it turned out to be a pretty good cheese. Um, Kim's put the link in there for Kefili, which is a great starter cheese if you're making hard cheese. So thanks for that, Kim. And Patrick said the same thing. Um, Chris B. G'day, Chris. Um, I've made Gruyere in the cheese cave and it keeps developing blackish spots. I'm not sure they're meant to be there, but had a thought, a vid of what can go wrong with moulds, etc. Um, vids for moulds. Yeah. Now, I think I might have some footage of some cheeses, like very similar to... Um, to Gruyere. In fact, I might even have the Gruyere video where I show some funky moulds um, on the outside. And it will, because you're, you're wiping it with a brine all the time, it kind of promotes mould growth a little bit. Some of those browny, um, blackish, grey moulds, which are fine, the, not the pure black one, that's toxic. I, I'd get upset if there was some of that on my cheese, but You'll find Gruyere does that. It tends to brown and darken and grey the outside of the cheese. You'd be surprised. Go and check out a, um, and I think there are some on YouTube, some Gruyere videos on how they make Gruyere. Um, and you'll see the moulds and stuff they grow on the outside. It's crazy. Um, so, yeah, check that out. Um, Lice Dog said, uh, Hi, Gavin. Thank you for your advice and video. I made your Borson recipe. And it's really similar to what we can buy. So thanks again. There you go. Borson was a hit. I didn't know what it was going to be. But um, once I put the video up and it started to get all those views, I was very, very happy with it. Um, and obviously the taste. Um, Kim and I demolished it. <laughs> it's gone. Um, both of those. We ate them over two weeks. Um, so on crackers. Um, didn't really like the bagels very much. Maybe I just didn't get fresh ones, but... They weren't my um, piece of cake. Anyway, the um, uh, Goat Garden Farm says, love your videos and all have been a great success with raw goat's milk. Thank you. Oh, well, that's nice to know because a lot of people do ask. Thank you, Goat Garden Farm. Uh, a lot of people ask whether my recipes can be used for goat's milk and you've just proven that most of them can be. So um, you probably have... Not used as much um, rennet, maybe. But if you're using the same amount of rennet and all that sort of stuff, then and it works, who am I to change the recipe? Uh, Jack says, hi, Gavin. I have an issue making mozzarella. 
or mozzarella, however you want to say it. The curd hardens, but when heated, the whey looks like milk, and the curd dissolves into heated liquid. Well, Jack, it depends on the type of mozzarella you're making. Um, if you're making quick mozzarella and this is all happening to you, forget it. Don't make quick mozzarella anymore. It's not for you. Um, make traditional mozzarella. Uh, and there is a traditional mozzarella video that I've got online. So go and check that out. Um, Kim may have put the link up. I'm not sure. Um, but uh, yeah, try traditional mozzarella. It's much easier to make. Um, quick mozzarella is just a pain. There are so many variables. Yeah, look, it works sometimes. Uh, sorry, first time for some people. I know the first time I made it, it didn't work. Um, and then I had to go read about some of the science and what happened. So, you know, how much citric acid to add? Is it adding too much? I actually even used some pH paper at one stage to check... Um, whether or not um, I should um, use a little bit less citric acid. But, yeah, that's what I had to do to get mine right. Um, but use traditional mozzarella is so much easier. It's just you just got to wait for the um, curd to get acidic enough so for you to stretch it. Okay, Manuel said, When I made boars and cheese, you added a cup of fresh cream. How many grams in this cup? Um, don't know how many grams, but the millilitres was... If it was a full cup, I think it was a half a cup. It was 125 millilitres, if I remember rightly. Do you use um, yogurt starter culture Bulgarian before? Um, if you have how many grams in the yogurt? Um, I have a Bulgarian style starter culture in the shop and I've used it myself. Uh, it's called Tangy Yogurt Culture. It is Bulgarian style. I've checked. It's made by Sacco. Um, I use a eighth of a teaspoon per eight litres of milk. I think that's what I roughly used. Um, or I make the yogurt up myself uh, first. And if you want to see that, go and check out the provolone video. And I used um, Bulgarian yogurt or tangy yogurt as a starter culture. And that seemed to work out okay. It's a very fast acidifier. So that's what you kind of want when you're making pasta for lighter cheese. However, the cheese did turn out a little bit yogurty. That's the, the taste profile, anyway. You could really taste the yogurt culture in it. Anyway, uh, lots of links there from Kim. Thank you very much. Um, Ruth says, um, is the Munster recipe the same for the square shape? I think I'll try one next month, but don't have small camembert moulds. Uh, uh, no. No. There's two types. There's the American Munster, which is basically a, it's a, like a press cream cheese with annatto spread all over the outside to make it look, um, <laughs> to make it look like uh, Munster. And then there's real Munster from France and Germany where you use Brevi bacterium linens and they're usually round sort of shape. Um, so yeah. So um, Ruth, um, Try my recipe. The recipe that I use is the stinky one. Very stinky and very nice. Tastes fabulous. Um, Axon Fact says you pronounce it like Ray Ka Jun Ja Jan. Oh, see, I can't even pronounce phonetics properly, which is the sort of a cream cheese. Okay, I've got that there. <clears throat> um, um, Goat Garden Farm. Gavin, can I make a bacon flavoured gouda? Uh, I have seen on Job's Cheese Lab, I don't know if he's still active anymore, but his YouTube channel's still there. Um, he made a bacon gouda, and apparently it tasted pretty good. So if you want to see a bacon gouda video, I don't know if I'll ever make one, um, go and check out his channel. It's called Job's Cheese Lab, as in uh, J-O-B-E-S, Job's Cheese Lab. Um, go and check him out, and uh, he has a bacon-flavoured gouda that he made. Dwayne says, hello, Gavin. Hello, Dwayne. Long time ago, people did not understand what we know now. It's good that we have a better understanding of things today. Indeed. Indeed it is. Um, yeah, because um, well, I won't say thousands of people got sick, but there is evidence from the... Um, 
ancient tombs in Egypt and in the Fertile Crescent where they've actually found uh, clay pottery that has had milk fat um, or cheese residue in them. And they're actually riddled with, um, uh, they're riddled with bad bacteria. Um, and people would have got sick, <coughs> excuse me, people would have got sick from eating it um, depending on when they ate the cheese. Um, so, yeah, it's good that we know that pasteurisation is a good thing or when we use raw milk, we use it correctly and, uh, pardon me, age it appropriately. Okay, um, where are we? I'm up to somewhere here. Oh, goodness me, I'm way past. I've lost, I'm lost. Uh, bacon flavour, velveteen rabbit. Oh, it's flashback. It's all coming back to me. Um, yeah, thank you, Kim, about the velveteen rabbit. Artie Frogs says, when making cheese and the recipe says slowly raise the temperature up, how important is it to raise temperature slowly? Uh, very, very important because what happens if you if you heat it up really quickly, uh, it locks in way into the curds and it makes the final cheese bitter. And it doesn't matter how long you age it, it won't unbitter it, if that is a word. Very important to raise the temperature slowly over the time period that it states in the recipe. I wouldn't say it for the heck of it. There is, a, yeah, That's why it's important. Bitterness. It's all about bitterness. Okay. Um, Dwayne says, family friendly is why your channel is so good. Thank you very much, mate. Um, and Kim's sorting out naughty people, I think, too. Uh, Mark says, thanks, Gavin. About my mould problem, that was my very first cheese made too. Okay. Um, hopefully that helps, Mark, whatever I said. Uh, Dwayne, what do you think about the earliest type of cheese was? Where did it originate? Um, yeah, Dwayne, there's a whole book on the subject. Uh, of, uh, let me see if i got it. Hang on, I'll check my bookshelf. If you want to learn about the history of cheese, a very in-depth research, that side. This is the book for you. Um, cheese and Culture by Paul uh, Kinstead. Uh, it's called A History of Cheese and Its Place in Western Civilization. It actually, well, it's been found that um, uh, cheese originated in the Fertile Crescent in Sumeria, I think. Um, and it was actually just curds. So it's cheese curds um, that have been lactic set by just going from raw milk and just let set into clabber. And um, it basically was an offering to the gods every day in their temples to Ishtar and all that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, that's f some of the first cheeses um, when um, humans started domesticating animals um, like chickens. and well, You can't milk chickens. Um, cows and goats. Uh, that's what happened. They started milking them and made cheese, and cheese just naturally happened. It was pretty cool. Um, Adam says, Hi, Gavin. I made your kalumi on the weekend, and it was delicious. My only concern is that I couldn't fold mine like you did. Can you think of any obvious, anything obvious why it wasn't as flexible as yours? Hmm. Uh, could be rennet. Uh, the amount of rennet you use, maybe ease off a little bit. That'll make the curd a little bit less firm. Uh, but then you may have an issue with curd set. So, I don't know, do what you want to do. Um, I, it, I really struggled on both the <laughs> Lumi videos that I've made uh, to fold them over. Really, you only need to fold the halloumi over if you're going to put mint in the middle. And by mint, it's fresh mint. This is what the Cypriots do anyway, I've seen videos and stuff um, they actually use fresh mint fold the halloumi over and put the mint in the middle that's it that's the only reason they fold it you don't have to otherwise um, other than that just cook it and it tastes amazing um, Dwayne says have I made um, butter from uh, oops sorry super chat Paul g'day Paul $20 that's very generous of you let me just um, make that sign go away 
Um, Paul's got a question. I tried my brick cheese today after eight weeks. Some eyes and very creamy like you, but just a tad acidic. Would a bit more salt help, it seems? It could use a little taste. Any thoughts? Yes, indeed. Um, a lot of issues. And there's your gold star. There it is. There's a gold star for you, Paul, for your $20, and I really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, a little bit more salt would help. Um, salt actually fixes a lot of things. You'll find that if your cheese is bitter, then you probably didn't add enough salt. Um, it's usually the problem because uh, there was overactive um, uh, pryolysis, which is breakdown of the proteins, which sometimes in some cheeses causes bitterness. So a little bit more salt would help um, and it'll cut down the acidity. Um, so yeah, that will work. So do that and that should fix it out. You kind of answered your own question, but thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, um, back to back to uh, the Halloumi question from Adam, I think it was. Um, I hope we've done that one. Um, Dwayne says, have you made butter and yogurt from scratch? Yes, there are videos. Uh, on it on the channel, Dwayne. So go and check them out. Just search for yogurt and uh, butter, culture butter I made. It's very nice. Craig says, Inglenook dairy milk is the best milk I've used in six years of cheese making um, by a country milk. Uh, delivered now in 10 litre cask. It's fantastic. And I think the reason that uh, Troy, who's the main guy over there, it's Troy and Rachel who run the the dairy processor and they get milk in from three or four dairies around the Ballarat area and uh, the one of the reasons he went to a 10 litre cask is because I kept asking for 10 litres of milk all the time for every cheese that's why most of my recipes are 10 litres and he kind of adapted to it so it's a bit of a chicken and the egg sort of thing there Craig um, Artie Frog says kudos to Kim Weber for her support behind the scenes and to Inglenook Indeed, and uh, Kim does a great job there. She's in the other office that way, that way in here. The door's over there for me. She's in the other office with her computer, and she's um, doing all of the um, all the links and banning naughty people, boys and girls, and um, all that sort of stuff. Without her, the show would be not as family-friendly as it is at the moment. So thank you, Kim, from the bottom of my heart. And I've got to say that because you're my wife and you're beautiful. Thanks. Um, Ruth says, failed three times at Oaxaca. Hey, fourth time's a charm, Ruth. It'll work. Don't worry about that. Um, um, Artie Frog's talking to Adam, wants to make halloumi, no drama. Oops, I've lost my spot. Um, it's good if I can control this mouse thing, wouldn't I? Um, Lewis says, you said brie would be stabilised with thermophilic culture, but what would happen if hard cheese were matured for multiple months, um, were made with mesophilic culture? Um, hard cheese, uh, they would be a lot runnier. Um, and this is another super chat there. Not sure who that's from, but we'll have a look in a second. Let's have a look right now. Patricia! Um, thank you, Patricia, for your $5 Canadian super chat. Um, I have kid lipase, which I've yet to use. Can you recommend a few cheese ideas for me to try lipase in? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, add it to feta um, if you're using cow's milk. If you're using goat's milk, don't worry about it. It naturally occurs. It's a lot higher in feta, uh, in goat's milk, sorry. Um, if you make... Manchego with cow's milk, definitely add uh, lipase. Um, if you uh, want to make a long-aging pasta filata cheese like provolone, uh, then uh, provolone picante, sorry, not dolce, picante, long-age provolone, definitely add lipase. Uh, if you're making parmesan and you want it to be really strong and you've used pasteurized milk, then definitely add lipase. So there's a few ideas for you, Patricia. Um, there's some cheeses you can try. And kid lipase is a lot stronger than what calf lipase is, by the way. So you'll have a really piquant flavor. So use a little bit. Uh, for 10 liters of milk, you probably only need to use a 16th of a teaspoon, which is, you know, a small amount. So... 
Um, yeah, so try that. But some good suggestions, I hope. Um, back to where I was before. Uh, thermophilic culture, yeah, if you made. So, yeah, sorry, uh, Lewis, the cheeses will be a lot um, moister um, if they're made with a mesophilic culture and they certainly wouldn't age the same. You wouldn't get the same enzyme breakdown as you would if you were using a thermophilic starter culture. So Parmesan probably wouldn't taste very parmesan at all uh, and you wouldn't have that really tight paste uh, that's in those cheeses. Kevin said, made Borson from YouTube. Taste was exactly, but it was very wet. Suggestions, please. Um, yes, I do have some suggestions. Um, uh, press the cheese longer, the cheese part of the cheese. Press that longer. Whip your cream, cream till it's almost like butter, so stiff beaks. Um, fold the cream in. Don't stir it in like I did. That's just destroyed all the air in it. Um, or use less cream. Um, so maybe a quarter of a cup instead of a full uh, half uh, half cup like I used. So there's some suggestions, Kevin. Um, and definitely use dried herbs. It absorbs a lot of the moisture as well. Um, so there's some suggestions on making it less wet, if that makes sense. And don't forget to use that baking paper because it actually does absorb a fair bit of the moisture I found which was good in my case because mine was fairly wet as well. Um, Axe and Facts says, thinking of all the homemade and DIY approaching approach to cheese making, can you create your own mesophilic cultures by allowing your raw milk to spoil under the appropriate temperatures? Um, you can create a mother culture that way. I'm not sure how. Um, I haven't tried it myself, um, but I have read about it. Um, it's best to use, what's a appropriate, so kefir grains, I don't know if you've heard of them, little milk grains, don't know how they're made, but apparently they work very well. They actually have, um, uh, lactococcus, lactus, so, so lactococcus subspecies lactus in them, which is one of the two standard mesophilic culture strains. Um, and it also has thermophilic or streptococcus thermophilus. Um, so those two lactic bacterias are readily available in kefir grains. And um, one of the other books that I recommend, The Art of Natural Cheesemaking by David Asher, has the entire procedure on how to do those. So, um, yeah, that's what they did. They let raw milk um, spoil for a couple of days before they made the cheese and the, the starter cultures. Uh, there from the normal environment or terroir of the uh, of where you're making the cheese. That's how they had all the different cheeses. Kevin says, my Limburger is getting white mould on it. Is this normal or should I wipe it off with a brine solution? I would hope you were washing your Limburger with brine solution quite often and it would go away anyway. Um, but it sounds like the surface of the cheese is quite neutral. Um and uh, a white mould likes neutral uh, pH cheese uh, and it grows very readily on it, um, which is one of the reasons why people sometimes add a little bit of geotrichum candidum with the brevi bacteria linens to help the red smear happen, help the bee linens grow, because that likes a neutral sort of surface to the cheese as well. Um, Dwayne says, what exactly is butter cheese? Uh, I do know it's called Boutiquesa or butter case. Um, uh, Boutiquesa is the name in Germany and it is not butter in the cheese. It's just a cheese that kind of very smooth and very Moorish tastes very lovely. Okay. Um, and there's a video about it, Dwayne. Go and look up Boutiquesa. It's very good. A lot of people have made it from the recipe. And they report back and says it's pretty, pretty good. I, in fact, I loved it. It was really nice. Okay, we've got uh, six minutes to go. So um, I am only up to 9.05, <laughs> uh, way behind where I should be, of course. But uh, you guys have been throwing thousands of questions at me. That's what happens. Um, Mark says, if you buy some buttermilk, you can keep making your mesophilic culture over and over 
there's a video on YouTube about it. Um, yes, I have used buttermilk. In fact, I used buttermilk as the starter culture for my triple pepper jack, and that turned out quite well. Um, there we go. Um, uh, Beck is awesome. Thank you for asking my question earlier. I hope you have a great day. Well, I intend to. I'm going to go get a haircut today. Um, you probably noticed, I only just noticed her, Holly has snuck up onto the couch again. There she is. There's our Australian Terrier, Silky Terrier Cross sitting. Holly, Holly, where are you? Oh, you're there. <sighs> Funny dog. Love her to bits. Um, where, where are we? Um, Kim, uh, Ruth says, Kim, I wish you could come on the screen once in a while. You rock. Thanks for all you do. Yes, she's the stalwart of the business as well. She packs it. If you order something, some of the cheese supplies, Kim's the one that wraps them and sends them off to you. Um, I do all the other stuff. Well, she, she does a lot of stuff in our business. It's very good. We're a good team. We have complementary skills. Um... Uh, Kevin says, used uh, Marzyme D double strength rennet, which is supposed to be 700 IMCU, half the quantity, and it did not set nicely. Would it be better to use a full dose? Oh, goodness me, Kevin, I don't know. I've never used that rennet. Um, I use uh, CHR Hansen Chimax Plus, which is about 200 IMCU. Uh and that seems to work for me. But obviously, that one you're using, I think it's by DuPont or Choose It. Um, I don't know. Sorry, Kevin. Can't help you. Haven't used it. Mark says, could you try some stinking bishop cheese? Ooh, it's very stinky. Stinking bishop. Uh, sounds, I know I've tasted it before. It's very strong. A proprietary cheese, so I might not be able to um, might not be able to find the recipe. Um, okay, Ruth says I'm jealous, Craig. I wish we had a milk sauce like that in San Francisco. Um, Kim says, Ruth, I will pop in and say hi on the 100th show. Well, only three shows to go, so Kim, you've said it now. That'll be interesting. Uh, <laughs> We'll have to get you a chair and you can sit down and we can have a cheese Q&A or something. That would be very cool. What's Kim's favourite cheese? Let me grill her. That would be cool. Um, uh, Carl said, I've just started a chicken milking parlour. I was talking to a man in the pub. That's hilarious. Uh, Jordan says, um, Gavin, I signed up for your Curd Nerd Academy yesterday. Yes, I saw that, Jordan. Thank you so much. I can't wait to... I can't wait to have the time to start actually making things other than soft, soft, fresh cheeses. Well, best of luck, Jordan. All the recipes are tried and true. Uh, there are a few people on the chat that have actually done the Curd Nerd Academy. And uh, from the feedback that I've got, it's uh, pretty good. I've got to put some troubleshooting stuff in there, which I'm going to be working on this week, and uh, put a few PDF troubleshooting guides in there. That would be pretty good. Okay, um, Dwayne says, what's my earliest food or cheese memory that stands out for me? Oh, very good question. Um, but we don't have time to answer it um, because it's time to go. And Kim's put the last links in there and I'm pretty sure it's, we've been going for an hour, an hour and two minutes, it says here. Um, but yeah, thanks, Kim. Kim should be doing the roll up in a second. How long have I been making cheese? Since 2009, my first cheese was feta uh, and it was delicious, but not as delicious as the real feta that I've made, real Greek feta, with 70% sheep's milk and 30% goat's milk. It was delightful. Try that out. It's a great recipe. Um, Zach, stop being naughty. You are a very naughty person. So let's take that. Um, um, thanks for the video. Yep, yeah, um, Kim, where are you? I don't know what you're doing. But anyway, um, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, appreciate your time as always, and thank you for all the amazing questions. If I didn't get your question, I'm sorry about that. Um, so 
Uh, Kim's doing the same thing I'm doing. <laughs> um, but yes, um, thank you for all the great work that you're doing uh, in all your cheese making endeavours and I hope you're having a great time. If you want to support the show, hit the join button below, become a YouTube member, you get early um, you get early releases of the, the cheese making videos that I make, not necessarily all the other stuff. And don't forget Patreon. Um, that uh, there's the link there, patreon.com slash greeningagavin. You can also buy merch, like my lovely cup. This is me sitting on a chair. Let's see. Can you see that? And the chair's made of cheese. Very cool. Um, that was actually fan art. And uh, don't forget, cool T-shirts like this one, Blessed of the Cheese Makers, and all the other cool ones that you've seen as well. So go and check out my merch store over at Teespring. Um, and you probably see them. There's T-shirts below the video, I think. Go and check them out. Um, and don't forget, you can check out, if you like audio only, and you want to listen to it in your car and stuff like that, pop over to littlegreencheese.com, and there's a podcast, audio-only podcast. You can go and check that out. I do about uh, an episode every month. Um, so um, go and check that out. And there are lots. There's about 85 episodes. So, um, check all those out. Anyway, thanks once and all, one, one, one and all, um, all you curd nerds for rocking up and um, being awesome as always. See you later, and we'll see you next week, same time, um, same bat channel.